And we are live here on the ranch group. How you doing? Ryan here with you. Special guest, Aaron Pierce. Now, Aaron, before we get into everything else, uh, you're our first former player. So I think it's apropos that we give the people a little inside look of Aaron Pierce. This is kind of meant to be, uh, I guess like the first thing that comes off your head, rapid fire. But if you say something crazy, we might have to dive into it. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Avengers or Justice League? Um, I'm not real big into either one. Okay. I, I, okay. Good. Because most people say Avengers. I'm glad you didn't take that route because then we would have had to stop <laughs> because my rebuttal is who's going to take care of Superman when everybody's gone? <laughs> Skittles or M&M's? Uh, M&M's. Peanuts. Milk, milkshake or malt? Milkshake. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. Nike or Under Armour? Nike. Sandals or Crocs? <laughs> um, I'll go with Crocs. Steak or pizza? Uh, pizza. There you go. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah, we are pumped to have you here as our guest today. If anybody has any questions for Aaron, go ahead and put them in the comments. All right, so let's start talking about your early playing career. Okay. How in the world, and you've been an athlete that has been sought after your whole career. Like, how in the world does John Curtis get in touch with a middle school you saying, hey, we want you to come play football with us? <laughs> well, I started out, um, I was playing park ball at Joe Brown in New Orleans East. And um, we used to play John Curtis. So they would come out and they, they still play park teams around the area. Um, so, you know, my first interaction with them was playing against them, you know, Little League. Um, and so my dad thought it was a good idea for me to go, you know, to go to the school. I started, I started at John Curtis in the fifth grade. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was, I've been ever since then. I think I, I was, I guess maybe the, fourth grade when we played them. I think the next year is when I started attending the school in elementary. That's awesome. I didn't think it would start out that young. That's pretty cool. Now yeah, they, let's, I talk, started kindergarten to pre -K. let's talk about some great memories from John Curtis. Cause we were talking before the broadcast and you were talking about multiple runs to state. What are some of your fondest memories of playing at John Curtis? Um, I mean, it started early really just seeing, um, you know, winning, seeing guys win state championships as, as I came up um, and just wanted to be a part of that, seeing guys go to college, um, you know, seeing guys that were at the school actually playing on Saturdays and it kind of inspires you and makes you want to, you know, work and win state championships and go off and play in college as well. Right on. We're talking with Aaron Pierce, former McNeese Cowboy running back. I like you still have your New Orleans accent, and I, I like that because I was – uh <laughs> I was listening to, to Teron Matthew talk to the LSU football team earlier this season. I was like, as many places as that guy has been, he has never lost his New Orleans accent. I like that. All right, so let's yeah, talk I mean, about I, I've, I've been going for a while. Um, you know, been in Lake Charles since 98. You know, been living in Houston since 2009. I guess, you know, it, it never really goes away. So your last year at John Curtis, you guys made a great run. And you came down to Moss Bluff, Louisiana, and yeah. it was the rage. Everybody wanted to come see John Curtis. Nobody was there to see the Sam Houston Broncos. <laughs> uh, you guys had a fantastic team, not only you in the backfield, but Jonathan Bobcat Wells as well. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, like playing with him, we he, he got there, I think, the eighth grade. And so we had been playing together that whole, you know, since the eighth grade. Um, my senior year, we, um, you know, we were rocking and rolling. Uh, we got hot doing that playoff run. Um, had to come to Lake Charles, well, you know, the Mars Buff and play. Um, I think that was that might have been my second time actually in Lake Charles. And, um, you know, we just, we had to take care of business on our way to another state championship. <laughs> and boy, did you. You guys whooped us 55 to zero. And I was telling you, you know, off the air, I was on the other side of that. And, you know, I... What still chaps me to this day, Aaron, like we knew we were going to lose to you guys because you were John Curtis, but 
at some point you guys had a little mercy and you put your second and third teamers in and we started driving the ball on you. And as soon as we got to the 50, here come the starters back. And I was like, no, <laughs> once. you're beating this 55 to zero. <laughs> yeah. I remember like I, I was done at halftime. Um, <laughs> so we let, we let the young guys get a little playoff experience. Um, but I think that playoff, you know, we hadn't, we, I think we were shutting out most of the teams we were playing. And um, I guess they wanted to go ahead and try to keep that keep that streak going. So, yeah. you know, threw the starters back in. I don't know if you remember this. The lights went out during the game for probably 20, 30 minutes. Um, I don't I don't remember that. Um, we probably had so many points on the scoreboard they had to you know, <laughs> probably knock the knock the lights out. The headline I, I, Go ahead. No, I said I don't remember the lights going out though. That game. The headline from local writer Scooter Hobbs in the American press the next day was, how do you stop a 500 pound gorilla? You turn the lights out. <laughs> Cause that's the only time we stopped you guys from scoring. <laughs> yeah, man. We, uh, we, we had a pretty good team that year. Like we had one the year before, um, we had a good group of guys coming back, you know, that was seniors that year. Um, and I want to say we ran off maybe four or five in a row after that. So that was number two for me. I think they went on and won the next three. And like we said before, you were a former uh, running back at McNeese. Everybody remembers Aaron Pierce. Now, was that was Tommy Tate your coach for the whole four years? Oh, no. Um, I got recruited by Coach Keesler. Okay. And um, so he was my coach coming in, and then um, Brookhouse took over. Okay. Yeah, so we had one year of Brookhouse and then Tommy Tate. Okay. Oh, wow. Coach Kiesler, what a legend. Uh, how did right. that happen? Uh, like, how did they, how did Magnese get in touch with you over John Curtis? Um, My recruitment picked up kind of late. Um, Like, so after that playoff run, I, I, I was, I, um, you know, running, I had maybe 150 every playoff game. Then the state championship game, I had. Uh, 210 in the state championship game, and then everything kind of picked up. Um, that's when I maybe a couple of weeks later is when I heard from McNeese and a lot of other schools. And I, I was recruited by Coach Stoker, so he mm -hmm. was my lead recruiter. Um, you know, so you know, developed a relationship with him. You know, we talked and we set up a date for me to come in and take a visit. Um, you know, it got started late, so I probably had maybe a three week window to try to get all my visits in. And um, you know, I came down, had a great time. I was, I knew I was coming. Nice. By, by the end of the week and by Sunday, I was like, "This is the place I'm coming." Yeah, you gotta stay in Louisiana. Coming from New Orleans, you, you gotta go somewhere where people know how to season food. You couldn't go up north, and people are looking at <laughs> right, salt and right. pepper like it's some foreign object. Right, and I said, and then you know, I, I didn't, I didn't go on a bunch of visits. I went to, um, I went to Nichols. I canceled a visit to Memphis, and, um, you know, I had a couple of us who tried to come back around, but like I said, my time was limited. Like I said, I only had maybe, you know, three weeks before the signing day, but I really enjoyed the visit. When I came down, the food was good. The, the You know, everything was good. I actually knew a couple of guys on the team coming in, so, um, you know, it, it, was, it was good. Right on. Well, we definitely are, are you know, Appreciative that you picked our school. Appreciate that. Now let's talk about this. What's some of your great memories from playing at McNeese? Um, I would say, you know, I me mean, just meeting a lot of um, you know, good friends, you know, people that I'm still friends with today, and then developing those relationships. Um, I, I remember the first year, um, no, actually it was the second year, being the number one team in the nation after having a bad season. I want to say we started out one and four that year, and we, you know, I think we finished five and five and one the rest of the way. Um, I think second second to last game of the season, beating it was Troy State. It was number one at the time, and um, you know we ended up winning that game, and it kind of took us into the next year. I'm um, starting off strong. I also remember my first getting my first start as a freshman in Jacksonville. Um, and setting up the, the all-purpose record in that game on my first start. So that was some of the cool memories I had. 
Right on. And I know when I like go on trips, I'm like, okay, I want to eat here. I want to eat here. I want to eat here. What are some of your old stomping grounds? Uh, because you're living in Houston right now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. When you come down and watch Mason at the hole, do you have a, like a list? Okay. I'm going to eat here. I'm going to eat here. I'm going to visit there. Um, it's mainly Daryl's probably. Um, yes. When I went, you know, when Mason had a chance to come and eat with us, he always went. That's his place he want to go. <laughs> um, you know, I try, I try to, you know, try something different, but we always end up at Daryl's. Yeah. So let's go. And, ahead and, and I, like, I like, I like Steamboat as well, but you know, I don't know why. Just we end up at Daryl's every time we get a chance. Oh, shout out to Steamboats, man! Have you ever had the house potato at Steamboat Bills? I have. Oh I my have. goodness. Man, I tell you, it's like, that's one of those things. If they ever have like a buy one, get one to take home. <laughs> like I would eat that every day of the week. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, that's the first time I had a potato like that. Um, mm. was there. And they, 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 they're delicious. I tell you. And if somebody from steamboat is watching, you guys used to put like pepper jelly for a dip with your alligator bites bring back the pepper jelly yeah, the, I don't think the I sweet that. and salty it worked perfect together I, I remember i was telling someone um when we when i was at mcneese playing after the games we used to get daryl sandwiches they used to give us daryl specials after the game oh god bless them and i used to give my sandwich away <gasps> never you know i'm you know i see the sandwich i barely open it up when my parents would come i'll give my dad my sandwich <laughs> Never had it. So, was it because you were trying to eat healthy or you just didn't know? I, I just didn't know. I didn't want a sandwich. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get something to eat afterwards. Take it's a I'm thinking it's a regular, you know, sandwich. You know, you can have that, give it away. Who wanted yeah. giving it away? So years after I finished playing, I finally had a Daryl special. And I couldn't believe all this time I was giving that sandwich away. Oh. And, and the best part about it is your dad kept it a secret. He was like, I'm oh, not yeah, telling him that yeah. it's awesome. He, he, he never told me. They just eat it. <laughs> that is cool. So let, let's go ahead and talk about Mason. Now, growing up, obviously, he's an amazing athlete. So you knew he was an amazing athlete from very, very young. Now, did you want him to be a running back, or how did he grow into a wide receiver? Um, well, he started off playing running back. Um since you know, it was when he first started playing, playing running back, and um, when he went to high school, you know they have ninth grade, then they have JV, and then then varsity. And you know in Texas, this uh, you have a freshman A, freshman B, JV A, JV B, JV C, and then varsity. So he started. He played running back his ninth grade year. Um, going into his his sophomore year. The coach was like, well, we want to put you on varsity. We're going to put you in a slot. And, you know, it, it, I mean, it was, it worked. It was perfect. It was a, I think it was, it was a good move for him because, you know, size wise, you know, playing running back, especially, you know, being what, 15 playing varsity, um, having him in a slot was better for him. And then he kind of, you know, took off from there. Yeah, most um, definitely. Yeah, And obviously with you playing at McNeese, how much of an influence were you where you're like, Hey, Mason, want to go play for McNeese? What's going on? What's going on here, bud? Um, no, I didn't. Um, he went to the, um, he went to the camp, um, his junior year and he had a pretty good camp. He went back his senior year. Um, and that's when they offered him. Uh, he, he didn't have a lot of, um, offers coming out. Um, you know, the school's talking to him and interested, but nobody never really pulled the trigger. Um, and so he got the offer from McNeese, and we were pretty comfortable with, um, you know, the coaching staff and, and familiar with McNeese and Lake Charles and had a lot of family there. So it was, you know, I think it was, you know, a pretty easy decision for him. Right, most definitely. Now, let's start talking about this season. New coach, Coach Gary Goff. Coming in with a really good resume. Mm -hmm. We got 50 plus new kids. Yeah. So, you know, there's time to grow. There's time to work out the kinks. 
coming from right. a former McNeese player and now a dad's point of view as well. What's your take on the season so far? Uh, uh it's, it's been tough. Um, but I, I understand the, you know, the process and what's going on and taking place. Um, you know, that, that's a big turnover having that many new, um, faces, you know, freshmen and transfers is, it's different now than, you know, back then, um, you know, when I, you know, and I told Mason, you know, we had a conversation because it was a little frustrating for him, you know, going through so many coaching staffs, you know, where he was recruited by Coach Gidry. Then when he, you know, um, Gilbert took over for one year, then, you know, Coach Wilson. So, you know, pretty much he de he's dealt with four different coaching staffs. And I, you know, explained to him, I kind of dealt with the same thing as far as coming in. I went through, I had three um, coaching staffs within the first three or four years. Um, but that's, that was different. You know, we had a, we had a coaching change, but, um, it wasn't a lot of turnover. So it was, it was a new coach, but it was a lot of same, a lot of the same coaches, most of the same players. So it's, that's a, a little bit different. It's an easier transition. Um, but with so many new players, um, a new coaching staff, you know, it's, it's a lot tougher and it takes a lot more time to kind you know, to get where you want to get. You know, you have expectations of what you expect and what you hope for, but you know, in reality, when you really think about it, is it, is it's too much newness to be able to, you know, to get what you're trying to get to as fast. You know, it, it takes time. Um, you know, for you could kind of see where, you know, it's coming together. You like you see, you know, bits and pieces. You see flashes here and there, um, but you know, it's about being consistent. You know, seeing seeing those flashes a little bit more every game. I mean, they had two tough first games, so you could kind of see the flash against Montana. You know, they played Rice. That They were just a lot better than us. So, you know, it's just, that was just a tough game. So you kind of see – you've seen a little bit more when they played Alcorn. Um, and you, you know, you want to take away the good stuff that you saw in that game and try to build on it. Um, and, you know, hopefully, like, games like we have this week where you can kind of really kind of get in the rhythm you know, and because they, that they haven't been able to get into the first two games or three games and kind of, you know, take off from there. So hopefully they can kind of, you know, get going this week and, and just get better and, you know, get ready for conference. Yeah, most definitely. Because, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people were thinking, okay, Rice is the most important game of the year. You know, we have aspirations of moving up the FBS. Obviously, our way into FBS would be Conference USA. And a lot of people were writing off Rice as a bottom dweller in FBS. And we found out that, hey, Rice has a pretty good program. They've been getting better year after year. And this year, you know, hey, they may be a bowl-eligible team because they just beat right down I-10, the Raging Cajuns, who people thought were a decent team. Rice is yeah. showing up this year. So, the, I mean, look, you, you go play in FBS school. The guys are going to be bigger, faster, and stronger, right? Yeah, I, um, I actually I watched the game when they played USC, and when I watched that game, I was like, "Well, it, it, it's going to be tough." I mean, I they were I would say they were better than what I thought they was until I watched the USC game, and I was like, "And I know they got they got you know they got to be pretty bad, but like you can kind of see where they had some success against USC, which is you know which is not an easy game. Then you take away the the four pick sixes and a uh, three, three or four pick sixes. And, and it's a lot, the score looks a lot different than what it was. And, you know, it, and it would have been had they not, you know, turned the ball over so much, but you can see what it was. Uh, -uh. looks like we got a frozen Aaron. You back. I think I lost you because I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost you for a second. Can you hear me now? Aaron. I can't hear. Are you there? Then we can definitely hear you. People that are watching. Can you hear me coming over? Put it in the comments if you can hear me. I think, uh, I think Aaron might be having some issues with uh, 
the Wi-Fi. Can you hear me now? Okay, the comments are saying they can hear me. Aaron, can you hear me? No? Check one, two, check one, two, because I can hear your audio. Can you hear me? I can't hear anything. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I, I can't hear you. Huh. Let's see here. What about now? Okay. Thanks. Can you hear me now? We're having some technical issues here, folks. Let's see. I can't, I can't hear you for, for whatever reason. What about now? Check, check, check. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Let me uh, let me tell them to uh, log off and log back on. Can you log off and log back on? I still can't hear. I don't know if that, that's going to show up on it. What is going on here? Yeah, because everybody can hear. hear both I don't know why I can't. I can't hear you. Okay. We're going to try to continue our conversation with former McNeese running back Aaron Pierce here in a second. We'll see if him logging off and logging back on helps out. Appreciate everybody commenting. Wish it would show who's in there. Yeah. Ah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> I felt like the Verizon guy. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we, we finished talking about rice and how they're doing, you know, so well this season. We come into last week, the McNeese faithful are at a buzz. We're thinking, yeah. okay, this is the game where we can get our legs underneath us. This is the game where we can start to gel. We're finally back in FCS. Um, well, I say finally back in FCS. I mean, not an elite team like Montana State. When you know, we're back on our level, you know, this is a game that we can win. I mean, my score prediction was 21-17 pokes. A lot of other people on the group were, were saying that, hey, this is the game. We're going to win it. We come in. We have some yeah. mistakes quick. Alcorn jumps on the scoreboard quick. And they don't really let up on the gas. They played a great game. They did. Um, yeah, I think they they were better than what I expected. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and didn't know we hadn't ever lost to a swag team. Um, you know, we but you know that's just part of the growing pains. Like I said, we still have a lot of figuring out to do. Um, and they, they they came ready to play. I think they but they are a, a better team than than than, than what I thought. Um, you know, I kind of expect them to to give Jackson State a pretty good game. Um, like I said, you go back, I always kind of watch the opponents that we play. I try to watch at least one or two of their games to kind of see what we, 
you know, what we have coming up. And, you know, you watch them play, you can you can tell that, you know, they're a pretty good, decent team. They play hard. They did a lot of good things against um, – and they did some good things against Tulane. Um, they played Stephen F. hard. They actually could have won that game. So, um, you know, so just kind of looking at that, you kind of should have expected a tough game. Um, but, again, them coming from the swag and, you know, we never lose to the swag. You don't expect to lose that game. Yeah, and then this week, Saturday, 7 p.m. kickoff at the hole, we got Mississippi College, the Choctaws coming in. Now, being a Division II opponent, I looked at their schedule. They look like a, a decent team, but obviously Division II talent. But that's where, you know, Coach Goff was talking earlier this year in an interview. He was like, look, Division II and FCS, there's not too much difference between the talent level it's just you have less scholarships at a Division II team. So Mississippi College isn't a college that we can take lightly, that we're just going to roll over them. we got to take these guys serious. Right. Um, and I, I think every time you step on the field, you should, you know, take it serious. Um, you know, going out there to try to do your best, um, dominate the opponent, um, whatever happens, happens. Um, but I, th I, I think the gap is about the same from, you know, maybe – a a mid-major to the FCS to Division Two, I think the, the gap is probably about the same. Um, but, you know, this is should be a winnable game. Um, you know, but we thought that last year going into West Florida, um, you know, they came in and took care of business. They're not on that level, you know, but you still got to come in, you know, ready to go. Because mm -hmm. you, you definitely – this is one you, you can't lose. Right. Now, after the Pokes win, I'm going to call it right now. After the Pokes win this Saturday, I think stakes are in order for you and Mason. And if you go to 929thelake.com, <laughs> we have a list. Uh, we power ranked the best steakhouses, or not the best steakhouses, but the best steaks in southwest Louisiana. So okay. you can plan your trip out when you come back down to Lake Charles this weekend of where you're going to get that steak at. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take a look at it. That sounds, sounds good. You make me hungry. There you go. Now oh, okay. let's talk about steaks for a second. Are you a rare, medium, rare, or well done guy? Uh, medium, medium, medium. Well, there you go. Medium I got to go with well. the medium rare. I, I used to do because my mom, when I was a little kid, she used mm -hmm. to always order my steaks for me. And she, obviously she would get well done. And <laughs> I just thought that was the way steaks were supposed to be until I started yeah. dating my wife and she was like, did you just order a steak? Well done. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's how I always eat it. She goes, no, you got to have it medium rare. And I was like, what? I don't even know what that means. And then, <laughs> and then the next time we went out and had steaks, I did medium rare. And I was like, <sighs> life changing yeah. moment. Yeah. A lot more juicy. I, I, I don't, I don't want to do any blood. I, I need a, I need a little <laughs> more. Uh, yeah, and I need to cook a little bit more than that. But um, I mean, I've eaten medium, um, medium, you know. Uh, but I, I prefer medium well. Right on. Um, let's see. Uh, so we talked about that. So let's talk about um, from a former player and a and a and a parent's point of view with your son mm -hmm. Mason playing. What would you tell the McNeese fans right now? What what advice would you have for them? Uh, be patient. Um, that's that's the that's the main thing. Um, just be patient. Like I said, I, I've been through that period of you know coaching changes. Um, and, and and it takes a lot, you know, to to especially like with with the transfer portal and and so many kids coming in and out. Um, you know, you you gotta establish that culture. You gotta develop the kids that you have. Um, and you gotta get, you know, like consistent years of recruiting your guys to, to get where you're going. Like we hadn't, you know, the last three coaches, when coach Wilson was here, he didn't get a, a full, a full class. Um, then you had so many guys leaving. Then, you know, um, you know, recruiting coach golf didn't get a, a full run at it to even get even for the first class didn't get, you know, the full time to get his guys in. So it takes time to get those guys in that you want and some consistency around 
the program for guys to see, you know, what you got going on to get used to the sit the, um, the system on offense and defense, um, you know, and buying in. And once they get used to that nigga kind of master, like I say, master the 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 offense, master the screen the schemes on defense, that's when you can, you know, it kind of get where you're going. I think um, you know, most of the time when the coach takes over, they never come in and just win a lot of games. Um, you know, you go back to Coach Keisler, I think he might have started off five or six wins. Um, you know, Brookhouse when he took over. We started out one and four. I think we might have won five or six games. Um, Vietor, um, you know, Vietor took over, but it was he kind of had a loaded. You know, we had a, a team. We, you know, we were kind of loaded, and it wasn't as much turnover. Um, you know, a lot of the same players came back. A lot of the coaches came um, came back. A lot of the same coaches. So that's a little bit different. Most of the time, when you have a big turnover, a whole new coaching staff, so many new players, it just it takes time. Um, you know, and that's that's probably the main message. Just kind of just you have to be patient. Like we really, you know, I like Coach Golf. I think he's doing a lot of good things. I think he's a good coach, but you still never know, you know, until you actually see the results. Um, so I think you just have to give it time to kind of see, you know, see how things, you know, developed over time over this first year. You do want to see improvement. Um, you know, even if you don't, you know, come out four and oh, five and oh next season. You want them competing and, you know, still like win the games that's winnable, but it, you know, it takes time. Yeah. And I wish this program showed who was commenting. Somebody gave you an, an exactly two exclamation <laughs> points and, uh, somebody else commented right here to be the 12th man, make some noise. The stands are dead. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta, gotta get it back. I think it, it helps the team when, um, you know, when they hear that, that crowd noise, it, it gets them going. Um, you know, the energy, you know, they need that sometimes, especially on defense. You know, the offense so much, I think you don't really – you don't really hit a crowd noise too much on offense, but on defense, it, it kind of – it gets them going. You know, so we do need that 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 excitement back in the stand. Yeah, most definitely. And just like you said earlier, you know, it's going to take time for Coach Goff to um, get his recruits in here because – like you said, with Mason being under so many coaches, all these people were recruiting for totally different schemes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been in three different offenses, you know. Um, yeah. This one is a lot better than the, the last one. But, um, you know, we had to learn. it. I mean, you think about it, you have – we got a lot of transfers that came in that hadn't played a lot as well, you know. So, we, mm -hmm. you know, we're a young team. You know, we got, you know, we do have transfers coming in from bigger schools. Um, so you got a combination of the guys that's been here that, that's played, but then you have some younger guys that's, that haven't really played a lot. You have guys that came, you know, from bigger schools that they were at bigger schools and they might have, you know, they might have been there a couple of years, but they hadn't had a lot of game experience, even though they've been at another school for some time. So, you know, a lot of these guys, this is a lot, this is their first, you know, real game action, you know, so, you know, it just, you know, you know, it's a, it's a combination of a lot, but it all, you know, takes time to come together. Um, you know, by the end of the season, I think everybody, it'd be a lot, they'd be a, a better football player than what they are now towards the back end of the season. Yeah. And, you know, I really do believe I have confidence coach golf can get us to where we want to be as a university and as fans, because, mm -hmm. you know, people grew up, here in Southwest Louisiana in the seventies and the eighties and the nineties and you know, the early to mid two thousands when there was a lot of winning being done in the hole and a mm -hmm. lot of successful McNeese teams, playoff mm -hmm. runs, national championship runs, and you know, people being dead in the stands. I think it's a product of, you know, where the program's been, especially the last six years with so much yeah. turnover, McNeese can't get anything going, but I think coach golf, maybe two years, three years, you know, we're going to be right back in there. We're going to be an FCS powerhouse. And yeah. I think he's going to set us up perfect for moving the FBS. W w what's your views on, on McNeese moving to FBS? Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's good. They, um, you know, I think they might've, I think they should have went, you know, made a better effort back when we were, 
dominating the Southern Conference. We sort of tried to, you know, go there. And I remember when I when I first got here, I mean, we were – I mean, the way Montana looked, that's how we looked in the stand. Like, it was 18,000 people. They had, you know, people sitting on the hill. And this was every home game. You know, it wasn't just for, you know, somebody coming in town, letting, you know, it's a big game. I mean, this was – every game was pretty much a big game back then. Um, you know, and I think if we, if we can get back to that, um, you know, it'll be, you know, the optics, it'll, it'll be better as far as, you know, trying to get to one of those bigger conferences. Um, I think the city of Lake Charles, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a city that it should be in a, in a FBS, you know, that type of city, it's a big city, a lot, um, you know, a lot going on, a lot of room for growth, um, a lot to do. Um, you know, and I, you know, Conference USA, Sun Belt, I think it'd be good for McNeese. Well, most definitely. And somebody says, go Poke Nation. And that reminds me of what I saw in Poke Nation one night where A.D. Heesh Royer was talking about, you know, the possible move to Conference USA in the future. He was like, you know, you go play an FBS team as an FCS school, they're only paying you like 500000 if you're an yeah. F, if you're an FBS school, even if you're in Conference USA, yeah. they're paying you over a million dollars to come play them. Yeah, That's see, crazy. I, I, I didn't, and I didn't realize that either. And I don't. It didn't make sense to me because I don't. I don't get why you. You would think we would get more than them. Um, you know, I, I didn't get why you know the bigger schools would get more money. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, but that is it's it's, it's that's crazy that they they do get that much more than we get. Um, but then, you know, and that is a good reason why you want to go up and, you know, get that money and, um, you know, compete at a, at a high level. Um, you know, and it's crazy because you look at all the teams that either was in our conference that we played, you know, every year in and year out, you have, you know, Texas State in the Sun Belt, Troy State, um, you know, we played every year. Um, who else? ULM. Yeah, ULM, you know, I, USL was in, in the conference. Um, you know, it's a lot of schools that then, you know, moved up there. We used to dominate, you know, and, and uh, the Appalachian State, um, Georgia Southern, you know, Western Kentucky, I played. All these teams I played when I was there, they all then, you know, went up and had some success. Um, it just seemed like we should have been, you know, kind of made that move. Yeah, most definitely. And <clears> – <throat> You know, it seems like because I think the Sun Belt would make perfect, um, um, perfect sense for McNeese. But uh, when we talked to Jim Gazzolo a few weeks ago, he was like, you know, they're already an established conference now, so they're not going to bring in any new FCS schools. Um, yeah. Pretty much, the only way for us to go in is Conference USA. But I like that because we can play Tulane and Louisiana Tech every year. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, it looks like, you know, the Sun Belt is kind of set on with the – I mean, that would the Sun Belt would be perfect for McNeese. That would be the ideal situation. It just – I don't see that happening. Um, but Conference USA still would be a good conference, and you have, you know, some, some schools that would be good rivals right up, you know, in the same state. Um, you know, it, it, it's still a good conference, um, you know, either way. You have Louisiana Tech right there, Tulane, two um, you know, then um, – is Rice in Conference USA? They are this year, but they're moving over to the American. Okay. Uh, yeah, but you know that. I mean, that it's still a good conference, you know, to try to get in. Really, probably our only option. Yeah. Uh, somebody says the Fun Belt. <laughs> Boy, uh, like the Sun Belt Conference has been on a roll this year. Their teams are just shocking the nation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the shocking part is, is that ULL is the that is, they're not one of the ones. Normally, it's them, but you know, you have the other teams this year that's 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 you know stepping up. But, but they have some teams that can play in the sun in the Sun Belt. Um, you know, you you had what well, Coastal Carolina a couple years back. You then had ULL, um, Appalachian State. Then um, who they beat recently? Um, Appalachian State. Yeah. They beat Texas A and M. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they, they didn't got some big wins. Yeah. Uh, Georgia state got, um, no, not Georgia state, Georgia Southern got Scott Frost fired. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yep. 
Oh yeah, man. Plant some ball in the sun belt. Somebody says, Hey guys, I know. Hey guys, I bet you that's Justin Kim. <laughs> <laughs> man, I wish it would show uh, the people's names on here. I don't know why they don't do that. Yeah, I see that. It's just a uh, big type. All right. So let's see. I, I lost track for there for a second. So we're talking about going to FCS, talking about you and Mason going to getting stakes after the win against the Choctaws. He, he probably was going to want um, Daryl's or something. <laughs> yes. what, what's his go to at Daryl's? Does he, does he get the special? Yeah, he gets the special. Jalapeno may, uh, mayonnaise? Uh, no, nah, he, don't, he don't do that. He, um, oh, has he ever had that? Does he not like spicy food? He does. He's kind of he's kind of picky, so he don't like a lot of like sauce stuff. And you know, he'd say he don't like it and never tried it. That's that's how he is. So. <laughs> My wife's the same way. I keep telling her, <laughs> you can't go your whole life without trying sushi, and she won't do it. Yeah, so you don't know if you don't like it until you try it. Exactly. Now, when when you guys go there, mm -hmm. you're going for the special, right? I, I do the um the boy shrimp. Okay. Oh yeah, that one's so good too. Maybe you can get a six inch of the bull shrimp and a six inch of the special, or at least right, tell yeah. Mason this. Order well, a I, side. I've got the special. I've got the special and added the shrimp. I've done that before. Oh, you know what? The last time we were there, we were there for a work meeting, and somebody got the the roast beef and put the shrimp on it, and I was like, I didn't know you could do this. This is game changer. <laughs> Yeah, see, I've, I've done the special and added the shrimp. So it was, it I was, think I'm going to do that next time I go. <laughs> but but when you get the special, you got to ask them for an extra side of au jus so you can dip it in even more sauce. Oh, that's a good one. I never thought about that. Next level. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, Aaron, we appreciate your time coming on here, man. Thank you so much. We're having a blast watching your son absolutely ball out. At McNeese, and we wish him the best. Um, any parting thoughts? Um, nah, man, I'm just looking forward to the rest of the season. Um, seeing you know how much they improved from you know from Montana to uh, the last game of the season. Um, I think they will. Um, you know, I, you know, I watch. I, you know, they play hard. Um, you know, they, the effort is there. They're just you know kind of young. Um, you know, and they got some areas to work on, but that's why you practice, you know, um, and they just got to, they got to, you know, keep, keep working. That's, that's the main thing. Um, the effort is there. So I, I, I believe they'll have some improvement and they'll be a better team, um, from here on out. Um, like I said, you, I think, I think we'll see improvement every week. I know we have a tough game to start off conference, so you kind of don't know how that's going to work out, but, um, I think every game after, UIW is a winnable game. And you said earlier, I remember one of my thoughts, uh, you had said earlier and you kind of re reiterated it there that we have a lot of young players and even a lot of the transfers that came in were sophomores and juniors this time go around. Usually when you think about a transfer from a biggest school, it's usually, you know, like an upperclassman. So these guys can grow with us. So that's awesome. And I just lost my thought again. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, Knox, he came. He was three years at Virginia Tech. Um, he hadn't played a whole lot, but he'll. I mean, by the time the season is over, he'll have so much more experience. Just this one year, the three years he spent at Virginia Tech. Um, you know, you have guys that came from other schools that just hadn't played a lot. That you know, getting a lot of playing time now, you know, is just you know is is valuable experience that you don't get not playing. You know. Yeah. And the coaches show was on tonight, actually during our broadcast. So I appreciate the people that are showing up and watching us instead, because Gary golf is actually really good at a coaches show. Him and Jim Gazzolo are amazing yeah. on their radio show, but I like what he said last week about the transfer portal. He said, you know, coming in, we had to feel the team. So we had to, to do what we did in the transfer portal, but he says, going forward, I don't want to sustain this team on the transfer portal. He was like, you know, guys that we will look at in the transfer portal are going to be guys who, you know, went to junior college to hone their right. craft, and now they're ready for Division One ball. Those are the kind of guys that we're going to go after, and I think that's a that's a good strategy because you know, the transfer portal, just like Coach said, 
number one, you got to think, okay, why is the guy in the transfer portal? Right. And, and two, he just doesn't think it's a long-term strategy that would be successful. And, um, you know, I can't wait for the future of this program. I think okay. in three yeah, years, exactly. we're hitting the right, ground. I, right. I mean, I don't think so either. If you have, I mean, you know, if you, if you have a guy in the portal, you want him to come in. I mean, ideally you would want a guy that can come in and stole for you right away. Are you bringing a guy in that's better than the guy that you have at that spot? Um, you know, now I, you know, I, I get bringing guys in cause you need, you got to fill up a roster and you have guys now that you can develop, you know, you have younger transfer portal guys that you can develop and they can kind of grow together. But, you know, after this year, it's like you, you want, I mean, if you, Instead of going to the pool to get a bunch of guys that you need to come in and start, you know, some, you know, you're not doing something right. You know, um, if you're going to the pool or you, you know, you're going to get a guy that's, that could come in and stuff you right away and make a difference. And, you know, that's, you know, that's what you want to get and develop the younger guys. That's when you have a program that, that you could, you know, that you could sustain winning with. Yeah, most definitely. Around your former neck of the woods, UNO is fixing a vote on if they want to start a football program. Do you think that would hurt McNeese, you know, recruiting in, in that part of the state? Um, I don't. Now, I, I, don't, I don't think it will. Um, they have a lot of talent there, and so it, it, uh, it is, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to get guys. Um, but we are still established. You know, McNeese is, is known, so in – um, it'll take them some time to kind of to get to be able to even to compete with McNeese. Um, but, you know, we kind of sit in a part of the state that has a lot of talent as well. You know, we can we can go either way. Um, so, you know, we, I think we're in a good, you know, good spot in the state where we can, you know, grab, grab guys from Texas. We can go up north. Um, we sit in a good spot, you know, as well as them. So I don't think it hurt too much. I don't think it hurt at all, actually. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was telling somebody that the other day. I was like, look, if Lamar can put the kibosh on McNeese cherry picking people in Southeast Texas, Lamar could actually be a force in a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I say right on right on that border, you can go either way. You know, that's mm -hmm. you're in a you in a good spot when you're sending that border where you can get that good combination of Texas, Louisiana. You know? Most definitely. I well, Aaron, I think you can do that. Aaron, thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. I know everybody here was pumped up to have you on. Hopefully we can get more McNeese players in the future because uh, you guys have really set the tone for what McNeese football is all about. And we appreciate your accomplishments. We appreciate your hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into this program. And um, go Pokes, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir.